And welcome back to Let's Play E7. Last time, we made it to the end of the ancient tree, and there's going to be a boss waiting for us in this next room. Off screen, I took care of uh, traveling back to town and synthesizing some new equipment for us. Got the Cicero Cutter for Adol. Uh, nothing special to say about this one, but it's a stronger weapon with Earth's Earth uh, Shaker on it. So uh, that'll help us out with... Uh, grinding that skill up if I want to use it a lot, and we will be using that skill quite a bit in the upcoming fight. Got the Leather Gauntlet for Dogi, this one just has combination on it, and uh, once Elk joins, there's a new weapon available to create for him, the Sen Leon. Uh, this gives him the skill Rising Wheel. Probably not going to be able to get him to learn that before we finish up here, but uh, that will... Uh, Come with time, with time. And of course, we've got uh, dark iron bracelets from the charcoal. Sadly, had to use up quite a bit of it. Make sure you have at least one piece of charcoal, because we're going to need that to return to uh, Michael Wooten. With that taken care of, there's actually a couple treasures I forgot to grab uh, in the ancient tree proper. So I'll just go take care of that real quick and meet you there. Alright, over here, the treasure is just off to the uh, main, or the boss entrance of the Ancient Tree. I just completely missed by the, or uh, blew past this one when we were running through here earlier. It has a Sally Mara extract. I did not explain what those actually do when we grabbed one originally. Uh, these restore your HP by 200. Very nice, and it'll be handy to have these for the upcoming boss fight. I'll meet you at the next treasure. Oh, hey, actually, uh... uh do you notice how Adol's HP is ticking up there? When you're in a field area, you can stand still and your HP restores. It's pretty slow, but it speeds up as you stand still. But I'm not a fan of it just because it's really boring. But uh, it is uh, a mechanic that's there. Uh, also note that it does not activate in dungeons, so once we enter the actual ancient tree, it won't activate. Alright, meet you at the treasure. Alright, here we are back in the platform area. Not surprised that I missed this one. As you can see, it's just tucked in right underneath this ramp. Get another Sally Mara extract, which gives us a full stack. Now that that's taken care of, I'll meet you back at the boss room. Alright, here we are back at the end of the Ancient Tree. For this upcoming fight, I will primarily be using Adol, but both Dogi and Elk will uh, likely be coming out. Uh, Dogi, definitely. So, let's get to it. I believe the Eldris said that uh, what we're looking for is an insect-type Titano. Titano. However you want to say that. Well, we walk through the door, Doogie. Hmm. It's like some kind of cocoon. I'm guessing uh, the beating we're hearing is this uh, just about to hatch. What the heck is in there? Hmm. So, do all Titanos grow like this, or just the, uh, the, uh, insect ones? Ah, uh, I guess we could have figured that's what happened. Uh, hey, Elk, don't go in alone! Oh, here we go. Well, not like we could get past this thing anyway. Here it comes. Uh, this is a weird giant fly Titano. Despite those wings, he can't really fly, but this is Zeranthith, the big bug beast. Alright, so this fight is pretty annoying. Trying to hit him from the front, your attacks just bounce off. What we gotta do is hit his legs. And uh, it's pretty annoying because uh, you're, you can also uh, bounce off the side and uh, frequently just have your attacks with. So the reason I like to use Adol here is because Earthshaker can register multiple hits on all the legs at once. So that's pretty handy. Whoops. Yeah, that jump, it's pretty easy to flash guard, but of course I'm not always perfect for that. You see how he spit web there? That web inflicts you with the heavy stats if you get hit by it. Here he charges at us. Ah, was going for the flash guard there, but screwed it up. It's very easy to get pinned against the wall by this guy, which is uh, not fun, as you can imagine. I better use my eco extracts up. Doing pretty poorly at the start here, but you know how it is, trying to explain things. Ah, I'm so inconsistent about flash guard. I'm also forgetting which button I have Earth Shaker set to. There we go. Hit him with another one. When we actually break his legs... Uh, oof. Did not chain properly there. When we actually break his leg, then we'll get into the proper uh, way to actually hurt him. As you notice, this isn't actually decreasing his uh, full HP. Alright, let's just hit that leg. Now let's switch over to Dogi, and his tongue pops out, or whatever the heck that thing is. We can hit it with a power hit, and then let's just uh, switch to Adol. Started uh, hitting that thing with lots of Earth Shakers. As you can see, we can't do very much damage to him before this thing goes back in, but we did a little bit. 
I'm gonna use up that last uh, Eco Extract. And if I get below uh, 100, I'll probably. Oh! That's uh, one of his special attacks there. He can spit the tongue out and grab a ally. And that's pretty annoying because it starts recharging his HP. Alright, one more hit, I'll use my Sally Mara Extract, or one of my Sally Mara Extracts. Man, I am just all over the place with Flash Guardian today. He's doing so much better in my practice attempt at this fight. Woo! Oh dear. Okay, Adol's out of the picture, but that's okay. We have a Tamika Extract, so we can bring him back in after a point. This is a good opportunity to use Elk, at least, so we'll just uh, switch over and do Rising Wheels. There we go, actually getting the uh, guard there. That uh, big cloud can poison you if it connects, so be careful for that. As you can see, Rising Wheel doesn't do terrible damage to him, so that's a good way to take out these legs. Uh, right, or his left side, or... No, that's his right side. Sorry, he's constantly flipping his orientation towards me, so <laughs> getting all mixed up here. That uh, one where he spits the poison bubbles, that's also not a terribly difficult one to flash guard, but obviously I've been doing pretty bad on those, so uh, let's not bother attempting. Probably gonna stun him. Yep, once he's stunned, that gives you an opportunity to just whack his tongue to free, get a bunch of SP, and then we can head back over to the legs, take those out, get him down again. Alright, let's spam some rising wheels here. Okay, that'll do us there. I probably will use the uh, Kamika Extract early to get Adol back in, because uh, actually uh, we're going to use it right now. We're going to want uh, all the damage we can get going here. I'll uh, wait until El Well, actually, no, we want to switch to Doge. These things right here, they don't resist other weapon types, but they are extra vulnerable to Doge strikes. As you can see, he does huge damage to them. These things take a ton of time to kill otherwise if you're not hitting them with Doge. So, we'll uh, do that. Stun it. Man, I am just all over the place with Flash Guardian today. Wish I was uh, a bit more consistent with that, but I wish I was a lot more consistent with uh, many, many different things in life. How it be sometimes. Oop. Yeah, the hit detection on those is so wonky. Alright, now that that's taken care of, let's switch over to... Well, actually, no, uh, we'll switch to uh, L. Just uh, use those rising wheels. This is also a pretty good... Oh, jeez. Man. I feel like I'm timing that right, but uh, clearly uh, that is not the case. Let's not get hit by the tongue. Thankfully, uh, your AI allies are uh, pretty good about avoiding it, so you don't have to worry about them getting the boss up. Hey, we actually did get that uh, raised up. Alright, let's uh, hit this guy. Let's switch to Adol, since he deals a lot more damage than Elk, and he doesn't have to fear reprisal right now. Hit him with an Earth Changer. That should get his stun gauge going. This guy, you can actually uh, manage to stun him a quite a few times, so not too bad there. Woo, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let's use a Sally Mara Extract there. Almost let Adol die again, and that would have not been too good. But at this point, we can stick to playing as him. Those Earth Shakers, yeah, it does tons of damage to him. Do not jump away from me, that is rude. Alright, we're close to the end of this fight. Hopefully he doesn't summon more egg creatures, but if he does... Oof, oh dear. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a situation where you want to switch characters. Heavy status will uh, guarantee you get take a ton of nasty hits, as Adol is so glad to demonstrate what is there. Huh. It looks like the boss himself actually is weak to uh, Doji Strikes. I didn't recall that. Well, here we're going to hit him with a bunch of uppercuts. That should deal some good damage there. See if we can't get one more uppercut in. Nah, I'm just gonna go back in before we get the chance. We're close, though. We're close, though. Okay. Oh, ah, yeah, I knew it. Once he turns pink like that, that means he's gonna do multiple of those charges, so be careful there. Yeah, not too many bosses in this game uh, actually have weaknesses to specific attacking types, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Let's see if I can do this right. Yes, you can guard these yells. Even though they don't deal any damage, uh, it is nice that you're able to guard them. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, try something here. Let's uh, try and stun this guy. Ignore those uh, little eggs. There we go, and we're just going to hit him with a uh, power hit, or power strike. Say that wrong. There we go. Throw a couple more uppercuts out. Oh, hey! Nice, nice, nice. All right, we got this in the bag. Here we go. Don't have to do another cycle. Yes, got him down. 
Not the best I've ever done that fight, but we did well enough. Didn't burn through all of my healing items. Still got our Marula incense. And with that taken care of... <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a, quite the variety of these creatures. I think uh, that's just a very weird way of spelling Mile, as a way to fake their own metrics. <laughs> yeah, we know, we know. that. Hey, you did good, kid. You did good. Hey, he is thankful. A little bit of graciousness. graciousness. Who'd a tunk? Alright, let's check out this altar. This is what we came here for. <laughs> That's gonna be a little hard for Dogi. Oh! I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Dogi is cool. Hopefully. Yeah, let's uh, check out this altar. Let's see what it does for us. Okay, heading on in here. Let's switch over to uh, someone who's a bit faster than Dogi. Yeah, that, uh, that fight went a lot uglier than my practice run did, but what doesn't? <laughs> it's the burden of commentating, man, I tell ya. Divides your focus. Earth Altar. Alright, All right. let's just get Adel up here. He is the one who is, uh, of course, worthy of whatever it is that decides that these altars give people powers. <laughs> yep, sure is. Great Earth Dragon, eh? Bratamage. Okay, so it looks like uh, there's various altars dedicated to various dragons. Yeah, particularly the crest on it. Well, yeah, let's, uh, come on, Nate, I'll just walk up and touch it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Hmm. Huh, looks like this guy is not any less oblique than the previous dragon. Looks like we're getting another seal. It looks like uh, Adol has gotten quite the task once again. But we get the seal of the Great Earth Dragon. And this one unlocks a very important mechanic for us. Hmm. Yep, yep, just as slow as that one also. <laughs> Great dirt dragon. Hey, <laughs> Earth, that's Earth. Alright, what kind of energy we got here? Looks like it's affecting everybody. Now, what dormant abilities is it bringing out? Sounds like a plan, my man. But yes, with the Earth Seal residing in Adol, 
We can now use party effects. This is probably the least balanced mechanic in the game, and uh, we'll get into that as we get more party members, but every party member in this game has a unique passive effect that, if they're in the active party, it applies to the entire team. So, as you can see, Adol's support ability is Accuracy Bonus. This one's pretty boring, and it's kind of hard to imagine how it really affects the game, because Adol cannot be removed from the party, so this one will always be in effect. Dogies is a bit more interesting. He improves our stun rate, so whenever Dogie is in the party, we do a lot more stun damage. Uh, in particular, moves like Earthshaker can stun enemies considerably more quickly if Do Dogi is around. I'm not too big a fan of this ability though because stunning just isn't that useful in this game. Uh, rarely will you be able to stun bosses more than once in the back half of the game and a lot of them are just outright immune to being stunned so Dogi's ability just isn't that useful. Elks is a little bit more useful for exploration. As you can see, he multiplies our gold. Uh, it's not a huge bonus, but it is a bonus. So if you want to make money, uh, it's of course a good idea to have Elk in the active party. However, it doesn't really benefit us at all in boss fights, while Dogies occasionally does. I used to think Elks was the worst ability in the game, but again, like, I, like Elk in general, it's kind of grown on me, and I at least appreciate it does something useful when you need to do a lot of farming in this game. No reason not to have Elk in the party for those cases. One thing that the game does not point out is that right now the abilities are relatively weak. Uh, as you can see, we can only get a .7 modifier from Adol. Uh, a 14% bonus from Dogi, and a 12% bonus from Elk. These bonuses increase as your level goes up. Some of them scale a lot better than others and become ridiculously powerful by the end of the game, so we'll be detailing that when we get more party members and can see what their abilities are. So far we have some of the less useful abilities in the game. We'll be seeing some much better ones later. And, uh, depending on how long... Hmm, maybe not in this part, but we will be seeing a very good one coming up very shortly within the context of the overall game. But that is, uh, all we need to do here. Let's get back to the Eldris and report what we learned. There is also a side quest for us to take care of before we head out of Shinoa, so we'll deal with that also. And actually, I just want to check our materials real quick, see if we've got, uh, hmm, may have to gather some saplings at some point, but I forget if that's something that's necessary. We'll see, though, we'll see. All right, Eldris, uh, you will not believe what happened. Mm-hmm. Once again, your uh, grandson ignored your authority. Ah, uh, yeah, Adol's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, we didn't narc on Elk, but he just kind of blabbed on himself. <laughs> oh, boy. First it was Cranky Kong beating on DK, now it's Eldris Fatima beating on Elk. What is it with these grandparents and the corporal punishment method? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the Eldris would probably react less politely to such a <laughs> sacrilege. Altago fancies itself the Pangea of the world. So, five dragons? That means there's three more altars we gotta get to, if I'm following this correctly. Sweet, we communed with a deity. Speaking of altars, there is a side quest that is tangentially related to that that we gotta get to. Hmm, General Dryson, eh? Ah, okay. He can help us out there. 
Alright, looks like Seagram is our next de destination, but we will have to get to uh, Altago first. Ah, uh, don't be so judgmental, Dogi. He's a little bit more reasonable than uh, the Prime Minister. I mean, it's not like we have any other leads. <laughs> Thanks, Biff. Sorry, Elk, this isn't a buddy movie. fly by night with him. We will not abscond with the child. Alright, we got our mission here. Uh, talk with General Dryson and uh, hopefully he can direct us to uh, the altar in Seagram. Uh, well, you haven't appeared in an East game after this, so I'm not sure how that panned out for you, Elk. Well, uh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Manners is part of the adventuring package. Why, yes, the medicine. <laughs> well, it's kind of easy to lose track of that uh, with uh, all that has happened. <laughs> Looks like uh, Tia is uh, naturally drawn to helping the injured. Sweet, that solves that problem for us. And finishes off another side quest for us. Of course, we'll have to report to Tia to uh, properly finish it, but you know, we got the important thing done. There we go. But there is one other side quest that we need to get to. Remember how there was a shrine at the entrance of Shinoa for us and we were tasked with uh, making an offering to it? Let's take care of that. I'll cut out all the backtracking that's going to be involved in this. Alright, here we are at the shrine. Now let's just uh, make the offering. We of course have plenty of Kamika fruits to uh, give up. Alright, let's do it. <laughs> Offer zero Kamika fruits. Alright, but let's uh, report back to her and get our reward. Alright, here we are back at the house where we got the quest. Alright, Carol, here you go. And for our troubles, we get a thousand gold. Very nice. That puts us over ten thousand, which means I can get a new weapon for Adol once we get back to Altago. A ring, eh? White snake ring. Well, that just so happens to uh, be the accessory that we got in the ancient tree. So yes, it's very important that you pick up that white snake ring because uh, it'll uh, allow us to complete this quest much more easily once we have it. All right, once again, I'll meet you back at the shrine. All right, here we are back at the shrine again. I think it's worth noting that this quest is much, much easier and less tedious to complete later, but there is a... Uh, we want to do it right now, because the rewards are only re really useful for doing so if we do it right now. Alright, let's offer that up this ring. <laughs> Not ready for that commitment. I like that one. And uh, that should take care of it. Alright, let's report back to her and get another reward. Alright, once again, we're back in Carol's house. Yep, did just as you asked. Awesome, 1,500 gold. This is uh, proving to be quite fruitful. Hmm, yeah, no problem. 
All right, so for this one, it requires spring water. I wasn't sure if we needed saplings or spring water for the final step of this request, but thankfully we do have plenty of spring water, so I will meet you back at the shrine. All right, once again, back at the shrine. All right, let's just clean this guy off. Five cups? Easy. Time for some spring cleaning. And, once we complete this leg of the quest... Hmm, what the heck? What is this? Silver snake ring? Now what does that do? Well, as you might imagine, it's an upgrade to the uh, white ring that we offered. But it seems to be a lot more beautiful now. And this item is a pretty unique one. Uh, the Silver Snake Ring, in addition to making you immune to poison, it gives you plus 10 strength and plus 10 defense. So it's poison immunity, uh, power wrist, and a shield ring all rolled into one. Pretty nice, actually. So let's throw that on Adol. It's going to be a little bit before we get any better accessories. All right, with that taken care of, uh, to actually properly complete the quest, we do have to report back to the woman one more time. Yeah, lots of backtracking. See you there. All right, talking to Carol one last time after cleaning off the statue. Oh, nice. And we get one last bundle of gold. So for all of our efforts here, we get 4,500 gold plus a unique accessory. Pretty cool. And quest nine, Forest Guardian Pilgrimage completed. Of course, there's still one more quest in Shinoa that needs to be finished. We need to give that guy his wood, but we cannot complete that yet. And thankfully, we'll be able to complete it much more easily by the time we actually can collect some new varieties of wood. Now, there is actually an event on the way back to Altago, so I'll just meet you there, but otherwise I'm going to cut out the backtracking. Hey, Elk, what's going on? Hmm... All right, just don't burn yourself out. All right, cool. All right, let's get back to Altago City. Meet you there. All right, once we make it back onto the Eastern Altago Plains, we are interrupted by an event. What the heck, Tia, what are you doing out here? Looks like she's having a bit of trouble here. Come on, Doogie, let's get in and save her. Fortunately, this is far from the toughest thing Adol and Dogi have ever had to fight. As you can see, we just got a bunch of trash tier monsters here to take out. Nothing too fancy. Let's just have Adol whack these slugs. Ah, uh, there is actually an achievement to get where you have to prevent Tia from taking damage. I've already gotten this achievement, but it's a, uh, it's a uh, not a big deal that I screwed up there. But if you are going for that achievement, be sure to save before you get into this fight. As you can see, T is not very bright and will walk right into enemy attacks. Anyway. So Tia was out here doing her usual uh, botanist business. Hmm. Sounds like a lot of strange things have been happening in Altago. Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. No problem. Ah, lots of sentimental value there, I can see. That is a pretty fancy hairpin. This is actually kind of nice that they made unique portraits for her without the hairpin. Yeah, let's ex escort her back. Can't leave your little sister waiting. All right, let's go. Fortunately, preventing Tia from taking damage in this section isn't too difficult past that initial fight where she just spawns in the middle, in the middle of a bunch of monsters. As you can see, we, we essentially one shot a lot of the trash tier monsters at this point. So we can just take these guys out. Biggest guys to worry about, of course, are those little flamingos that shoot projectiles at you. Uh, if you are too far ahead of Tia, the game actually won't let you go forward. Actually, just uh, while I'm thinking of it, uh, oh, I'm missing an accessory, actually, or 
Am I? Uh, I can't remember where we find it. Uh, if, if I am, I'll just uh, look for it off screen. There is a certain accessory that uh, is um, relatively important for all these weak enemies that we're killing. I, I can't remember where it is, though. But, as you can see, already back to Altago. No uh, issues along the way. Mm-hmm. Hey, we delivered your medicine. Yeah, two Titanos in a row. This has been quite the adventure in Altago so far. Yep, it was no problem. Sure, we'll take you up on that offer. Oh, come on, Dogie. This is actually very important to remember to do so, for reasons that we'll get into later, but Tia has extended an invitation for us. Yeah, let's take care of that problem first. Probably somewhere on the palace grounds at least, we can probably ask around for him. And that's something that we'll do in the next video, but this video's been running kind of long, so before we do that, uh, let's see. Uh, Michael Wooten will uh, get us in a protracted conversation if we give him the charcoal, so we'll save that for next video. However, we can uh, hand off the green stone to Teresa. Thankfully, she's uh, right on the first floor this time around. Teresa Runians. There we go. That was what it is. Let's give her one of the green stones. And for offering her the green stone, 2,000 gold? Heck yeah. That's a pretty sizable amount. Have to spend a few minutes killing things in the ancient tree to get that much. But that is the first stone we can offer her. There are four stones overall to complete this quest, and each one we get is more valuable than the last, so always be sure to turn those into her. Before we finish off this video, let's head into the weapon store. And we can get a new weapon for it all, the Silver Fang Blade. This one just teaches us Strength Blast, but as you can see, 15 points of strength over his current weapon. Pretty solid there. We'll just equip that. And take a look at our newly equipped adventurer here with a whopping 100 strength. Even stronger than Dogi at the moment, though obviously Dogi would pull ahead a bit if we got him a new weapon. I'll see if we can uh, not scrounge up enough to get him one. But I think this video has ran long enough, especially with all the running around on my end. So we'll call it here. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you next time. We will uh, commune with General Dryson, see if he can't point us in the direction of the altar in Seagram or help us out there. I hope you had a good, have a good day, and goodbye.